Surprisingly, thousands of people die each year from opioid-related respiratory depression and cardiac arrest. It is even more shocking to learn that this isn't limited to the recreational opioid epidemic in America. These deaths are happening to patients inside the halls of our very own hospital wards. Opioids can be very helpful for pain management, and in some cases, an incredibly important component to a hospital patient's comfort and recovery. But the side effects of opioids can vary dramatically among individuals and can fluctuate from minor to life-threatening. So opioids are powerful pain medications and they can slow your breathing, but they can also stop your breathing. And it only takes a few minutes after you stop breathing that your oxygen levels fall to a low level where you could have a cardiac arrest or you could have a brain injury. The danger with opioids is that patients respond differently to a given dose of opioid. And that variability between patients is, is really quite large. So we can't really predict how a patient's going to respond. Some patients who've never seen opioids may be very sensitive. Some patients may be on chronic opioids. They may be more resistant. But there's no good model that predicts how that patient will respond and will, whether they will suffer critical respiratory depression. A significant number of patients with critical, undetected respiratory depression suffer permanent, debilitating brain injuries, or even death. Unfortunately, the current risk assessment models can't reliably predict which patients will experience adverse reactions. Putting an end to this devastating and senseless loss of life drives the proponents of CEM, or Continuous Electronic Monitoring. Currently, the standard of care in this country is that a healthcare professional will go into a patient's room about every four hours. Some hospitals do it a little more often than that, but regardless, after the healthcare professional checks the patient's vital signs, they may be okay at that point in time. As soon as the healthcare professional leaves the room, the patient's no longer being watched and they can slip away. They can start to deteriorate, they can move into respiratory depression, they can move into brain death or actual death. Only through the use of continuous electronic monitoring can you ensure that the patient is safe 100% of the time. Picture this frightening scenario. Resting in a bed at the end of a long hallway, behind closed doors, situated in a busy hospital wing along with multiple patients, a person can stop breathing without anyone noticing. In April of 2009, my mom, Louise Batts, decided to, that she was gonna have to have a routine knee surgery. My dad had had quintuple bypass surgery actually two months before this. And so everybody in the family thought knee surgery was gonna be no big deal. It was totally routine. They said you're gonna be in and out in three days. And so we felt really, really confident about everything. After the surgery was done, my mom was moved to the orthopedic unit. The doctor came out. Um, he was so happy. He was just very, very pleased with how the surgery went. She had a beautiful new knee is what he said. And she was going to be in the hospital for three days and then, you know, on her way. And it just it felt like a huge sigh of relief. I was so happy that that part was done for her. And, uh, and then she went on to the floor of the, of the orthopedic unit. They told my mom that they were planning to give her the morphine again at midnight, the Vistral and Demerol. And we're like, wow, that's a lot of medication for someone who's never taken anything more than Advil. And um, around three o'clock in the morning, we got a phone call from the hospital saying to come, to please come to the hospital because my mom was having trouble breathing. Um, that was all they said. She was laying lifeless pretty much on, on the hospital bed. And um, uh, that's where 20,000 knives you know, just went through my body and you kind of wanted to just start throwing things, screaming. Um, she had no monitoring on her at all which I did not know that she wasn't gonna have any. And she went into respiratory depression and suffered an anoxic brain injury. 11 days later, we had to take my mom off life support. No patient should be dying or having a critical injury from pain management. Patients have a pattern of deterioration prior to which they have a respiratory arrest or a cardiac arrest. And if we can detect those patterns, then we can certainly prevent that from happening. There are different types of continuous monitoring. They measure different things. But heart rate, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation are the three vital signs that are most critical. Unfortunately, changing long-standing vital sign monitoring practices can't be achieved overnight. Education on the topic and an outpouring of public support for CEM is essential towards overcoming pushback from hospitals, 
which are only monitoring vital signs intermittently. We certainly believe that the only way to really protect patients is through the use of continuous electronic monitoring. There are some barriers, however, that we believe are keeping all hospitals from moving to using that type of technology. And the hospitals are worried about the cost of the technology. They're worried about interrupting the workflow of the nurse. That is, nurses will now have to learn a new technology, which can be difficult and add to the burden of their day. So hospitals that have implemented this technology have actually found that there's a cost savings over time. Once the nurses learn how to use the technology, they really like it. And I don't know of any nurse in any hospital that has moved through this journey that would be willing to give up the technology because they know their patients are now safer. The Amy Foundation is at the forefront of the CEM debate. It works with national experts, patient safety organizations, and industry partners to raise awareness and reduce preventable harm. So many companies out there have this great technology that can help patients. Why wouldn't we use it? I think if we in the community and we have community awareness on this and we go to our hospitals and say we demand to have continuous monitoring on myself because I don't know how I'm going to react to medication, I need to have that because I want to go home. The Amy Foundation is committed to enhancing healthcare providers' abilities to improve their patients' outcomes. CEM is a fundamental component of the drive to reduce and eliminate preventable harm. We can no longer defend good enough in terms of preventable harm in our hospitals. It's critically important for patients and their families to know that if they're going into the hospital and they're going to be on opioids for pain management, that they know that the only way for them to be 100% safe and protected from respiratory depression is if they are on continuous electronic monitoring. You just can't take that risk. Because I wish to God every day that my mom was here. To learn more about how the Amy Foundation is harnessing the knowledge of clinicians and the power of technology to save lives, please visit amy.org slash the foundation.